this is kind of the first lecture which is going into maybe a little more detail so far we have only seen uh, edge detection right and again detecting edges it's it's a problem but it's not kind of extracting meaningful information from from your images so today we are going to talk about features and this is the outline uh, we'll talk about what features are why they are useful why exactly we need to extract features and then we'll talk about like three different type of features the first will be uh, key points then the second is histogram of oriented gradients and you can see here that you actually know all these terms gradients you know how to compute oriented mean you know how to compute orientation and histogram you know how to compute histogram so these features are actually based on these three concepts so very fairly fairly easy concept you will see and then we have this uh, sif feature extraction which is scale invariant of feature transform and again as the name indicates we'll see like all these things what uh, does scale mean what does invariant mean and how the transformation is being used so the key points uh, it's like the first uh, type of features we learn it will be a bit complicated a lot of maths uh, involved it's a very classical way of uh, extracting features so we will not go into a lot of details like we'll skip some of the mathematical details because we don't want to do any derivation or uh, those things in, in the course right that will be too complicated okay so let's first try to understand uh, what is a feature and why exactly we need it so feature is something uh, which you extract from your input sample your input sample could be an image it could be a video all right and these features can be either handcrafted handcrafted means you 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 uh, design the algorithm by some uh, using some heuristics and use those heuristics to say okay i want to extract this particular property and then the second type of features are learned features so these features you don't have to use any heuristics and this is you have seen like when you train your neural network you try to automatically learn the features which are useful to solve any particular problem all right so for feature extraction what we can do is we can define a function and this function will take your input sample which can be uh, an image or a video and then it will try to generate some numbers so it could be just one number or it could be a set of numbers and those set of numbers we call them features so it, it will be like kind of a feature vector for you uh, if there are n numbers it will be n dimensional feature vector all right so that's a very general concept and when we are doing handcrafted features it's called feature engineering and this will require some kind of a domain uh, expertise you should know like what data you are handling so that you can actually design those features uh, with, with some good uh, background knowledge the other is learn features which will be automatically learned you will need some kind of annotations for these which will tell you the ground truths and then your network is going to learn them automatically whichever features are useful so you don't have to put in any effort in designing them and now we can briefly uh, describe features uh, at different level and this applies for classical features or handcrafted features as well as learned features the first type is global features right so global features are something like which you extract from the entire sample if it's an image so you will use the entire image to extract these features okay so some of the examples are examples are like uh, they can be just a template so we have seen a uh, template matching so it could be the image itself or we can have features like hog and we can have sift so these are global features so the idea is if this is your input image you will use the entire image to extract your features the second is region based features in this case what you do is instead of using the entire image you use like a small region in the image to extract the features all right and ideally whatever method you are using for extracting your global features you can use the same method to extract the region based features it's just like you are extracting from a small patch in this image not the entire image so something like this so let's say you extract the features from this blue patch and the third and the final one is local features local features is like as the name suggests it's it's uh, specific to a pixel location all right and it's kind of describing the properties of that particular pixel so to extract the features you may use like the surrounding uh, region of that uh, of that pixel so when you extract those features you can exactly pinpoint that okay these features come from this particular pixel 
And so as similar, like for region based, you can say that okay, these features are coming from this region. And for global, you can say that the features are coming from the entire image. All right, so that was like uh, some uh, details about features. Now, why we need features? We need features to solve many, many different problems which we uh, tackle in computer vision. For example, if we have to do some kind of object detection, then we need features. We need features for object recognition, for tracking, stereo estimation. So all the problems you are going to solve, you will need to represent your sample in form of a feature representation. Okay, and different problems require different type of features. And that is the reason like we have so many ways to extract these features. So let's uh, try to understand like one uh, simple example where features can be useful. For example, let's say this is the input image. All right, so you can see like a lot of places here, a lot of buildings here, there's a river, there's a bridge, and you can see like the Pentagon over here. Now, if I show you a small patch uh, of this building here, then let's say I want to perform matching. I want to match whether this particular object is present in this image or not. Okay, so then we'll see like how features can be useful. As a human, uh, I can just uh, watch us uh, watch at, the, uh, at this patch, right? And then I'm, I'm forming some kind of impression, right? It's a building and it has a specific shape. And then I'm looking at the surroundings. So the brain is trying to learn something from this patch. And then when we look back at this bigger image, then and when we're looking for sort of for, for a match, we will try to find similar patterns, right? For example, the structure the shape of this. So it's kind of matching with this. It's not matching with the bridge or any other building. So then this shape is important, right? Which means that when you extract the features, it should capture that information, the shape information. And it should capture the text, texture information. And also the surrounding, the neighboring region, they are also important, right? So you can try to do template matching. So you can use this as a template. And I think in one of the initial lectures, we uh, saw like how template matching works you put this image like at all the possible positions and then try to do pixel wise matching. So there are drawbacks. You have seen that it, it's not very robust. If there is a slight change in, let's say even the uh, the lighting condition, in this case, you can see that it's kind of gray, grayed out, right? So it could be a grayscale image. We are not seeing any colors, but in this case, we are seeing green patches. So it's a color image. So pixel wise match won't work. And also the perspective, this image is captured from the top. And this one is like at an angle, like an, it's an oblique view, okay? So if you try to do that pattern matching, each pixel, I mean, you will not able to find like the actual correspondence. So then what we do is we use features. And for features, what we can do is we can extract some meaningful features from this image patch. And again, I mean, how to extract those features, we'll cover uh, those uh, later. So let's say you extract the features, which indicates uh, the shape of this, or maybe, the text information or some other information. So that will be a very small feature vector. And similarly, you can extract features for the patches in this image. And then what you do is you just compare those features. And if you find that two particular features are matching, then you say that, okay, this particular pattern is matching with this particular location. So that's how your uh, pattern matching works. And that's like one good use of features as well. So another example, uh, in this case, you can see that it's not like uh, batch matching, it's like image to image matching. Now this is again, uh, we're trying to understand here why like pixel correspondence or pixel wise matching will not work. So if you look at this image, the lighting condition is entirely different from this one. Okay, so there's some kind of tint in this image. But as a human, you can easily say that, okay, this seems like the, the same location. You can see like all the statues, right? and all the structure is perfectly matching. But if you look at like pixel wise, if you just try to, let's say match this particular statue, you can see that the viewpoint is different, right? So even if you, if you try to do pixel wise match, the pixel value is not going to match because this is, uh, this is different if you just look at the RGB values and this is different because of this uh, change in the, the colorization, right? So that's not going to match. And again, if you look at here, like uh, 
lot of portion is covered by this uh, water fountain, small fountain here, but it's not present here. So there are a lot of, lot of variations and it's, it's quite challenging. So that's another reason we want to extract our features. So there is one important property here. Uh, when we extract features, we want those features to be invariant to a lot of properties. So invariant means your extracted features should not change if that particular that particular property is changing. So one such property could be, let's say, uh, the lighting condition. Right. So if let's say this is a evening image or this is a morning image, so lighting condition will be different, or this is a night image, then the extracted features should not change. They should be exactly the same. Then that's that will be a very good feature. Okay, so that's what we want. So that's one property. The second property is it could be like the change in viewpoint. So in this case, it's you can say kind of a frontal view, and this is slightly like from the left. So if your viewpoint is changing of your image, again, your features should not change. And if they are not changing, it means that your method or your algorithm for feature extraction is viewpoint invariant. So that's a very good property. Okay. So later we'll see like a lot of such properties which are actually required for a good feature extraction algorithm. And again, this is like one simple uh, application of, of features. And the idea here is, let's say you are at a, at a location and you capture a lot of, lot of uh, images of, uh, of, of the place when you were uh, uh, going around in, in, in that vicinity, right? And then you know the viewpoint, then you know the location from where you capture. So then what you can do is you can collect, take a collection of all these images and try to construct like a 3D structure of that particular, in this case, uh, th th this particular building, right? So the locations here, these triangles you are seeing, these are, the vertex is the location from where the photograph was captured and the cone is pointing towards like the viewpoint where the camera was pointed towards. And using all these uh, images, we can actually create this 3D uh, model of this building, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's another application of features. And then you can perform uh, panorama stitching. So the problem is, let's say you have two different images which are uh, kind of overlapping and trying to capture the same uh, object, in this case, this mountain. So you can see that we can observe like this mountain over here. So the structure, it's kind of matching with this one, right? But it, it will be very challenging if you try to create a panorama because we don't know like the exact pixel wise correspondence. And in this case, we can use features. And we can try to match features. If the features are matching, then we know the pixel-wise correspondence, and then we can easily overlay like one on top of each other, and we can create a panorama. Okay, another good application. So that was all about images. Uh, videos are more interesting and, of course, more challenging. Now, let's say we have a sequence, something like uh, this: a person is walking. So video it's like high dimensional because you have at each time step you have a frame which is if it's rgb it will be three channels and usually we have 30 frames per second so let's say even if you have a video of three seconds that will be roughly 90 frames and if you do a calculation and count like the number of pixels you have that will be huge that will be like roughly the resolution x and y then times three the channels and times number of frames you have so in terms of memory, it will consume a lot of memory. So then what we want is we want like a very compressed representation of the video. Again, we can do using feature uh, extraction. And I will show you like one uh, very interesting uh, set of features which we can extract from videos. And we'll see like how they are useful for performing different tasks in videos. So these tasks could be like facial expression. You can try to classify those. You can try to classify sign language or maybe arm movements or any activity happening in the video. Okay. So this is a, a silhouette like of a video. So we have the boundary of the person and it's just showing like sequence of frames when the person is walking. So in this case, you can see that uh, it's in itself, it's like compressed because first of all, it's binary. For each pixel, we only have whether it's zero and one. So we have saved a lot of memory. And the other thing is, uh, it's just like 
telling you the location uh, where the person is present, right? So we don't need the complete RGB video to determine whether the activity is working or not. As a human, we can see it's the activity working. So if we can do that, then you can develop an algorithm as well, which can actually interpret that because I mean, we are not losing any information here. All right. So let's see if we can compress this uh, any further. If I show you just the joint angles. So joint angles is like, uh, this is your arm, right? This is your elbow. Then again, on uh, the shoulder, then we have the torso. So we call these joint angles where our bones are, bones are actually uh, joining. And a, a, a comprehensive list will be like 25 uh, joint angles, which compose like the full body structure. But, but in this case, I'm just showing you uh, three, four, five, six, six joint angles, right? So two for the knees, I think two for the elbows, and I think one is for the torso and one is for the head. And if I show you uh, uh, the sequence here, uh, I will say it's hard to say that it's working, but still, if you know that it's a person and if you have to estimate, okay, what activity might be happening, then you can say that it could be walking, but it could be clapping as well, right? And then moving the legs at the same time. We don't know. So, but again, we do have some cues here. So this is like useful uh, piece of information, but we can uh, make it more detailed. We can have more joint angles. In this case, I think it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 joint angles. And in this case, you can see that you're more confident that if you know this is a person, you can say that okay, person is definitely walking. And if you compare like the amount of memory you require for uh, this kind of uh, feature, it's not that huge. But as a human, you can easily say that a person is walking. So this could be like a very good feature representation for videos. Okay, so now let's let's try to understand like when we're extracting features, what are some good characteristics which uh, we definitely want uh, from the algorithm when we uh, we are going to extract the features. So first is uh, distinctiveness. And the idea here is we want each feature to be uniquely identified. All right. So the feature, it should not be like mixing up with any other feature so that we can say that, okay, if we have this feature, it means something. All right. The other uh, property is repeatability. So if you have an image, you are extracting some feature, then if you run that algorithm multiple times, you should get the same set of features. So it should not happen that the second time you're getting something else, third time you're getting something else. So it should be repeatable. Not just that, it should be robust to translation, rotation, scale, and all these properties, right? So reflectance, illumination we discussed earlier. So if let's say I am translating the image or translating the camera a bit when I'm capturing the image, then the feature for any particular pixel, it should not change just because the camera was like panned a bit. Again, if there was a slight rotation in the image, again, the features should be consistent. So that's translation, rotation, scale is also very important. So scale is something in this case, uh, let's say uh, this is a zoom, uh, zoomed in version. If let's say we zoom out a camera a bit, then this mountain will be of a smaller scale, right? It's kind of capturing the mountain from far. Or we can make it like closer to the camera by making uh, by doing a more uh, zoom in on that. So that's kind of changing the scale of uh, the object. And again, that should not change the kind of features you're extracting. And again, perspective is something. I mean, the it could be like the viewpoint from the uh, uh, from we are capturing the image. So it could be like from the ground. It could be from the uh, oblique view on from top view. So those are uh, geometric transformations and these are photometric. So this is good. Right. So this is uh, like translation. So the same mountains, but slightly on the left here. So the extracted features from these points should not change. And this is also very important. We want our features to be very compact. So it should not be like you have uh, an image, which is, let's say, uh, 100 cross 100. And then again, you need 100,000 or 10,000 dimensional feature vector to extract the features. So that's not good. So that also relates to efficiency because later when you will uh, try to do matching, so the smaller the feature vector, the faster it will be to match. 
then the other interesting thing is it should be independently uh, run on each sample so whatever feature you're extracting for uh, from one image it should be independent of all the other images you have in your data set okay a uh, question from daniel uh, this seems to be geared towards handcrafted is there a way to ensure machine learn features are in fact good features so daniel that's a very good point uh, at this point it might be uh, appearing as like this is uh, targeted towards handcrafted but all these properties we do want in our learn features as well okay so later we'll talk about like how we can do that but yeah all these properties it's not specific to handcrafted features all these characteristics we do want in our uh, learn features as well okay but yeah that was a good point so question from Anshuman: when we implement some feature which is rotational invariant then will we get exact match or just a small distance between descriptors if matching with some rotation okay again that's a good point so these are the properties or characteristics which we want i'm not saying that we can 100 percent do that but we try to do this we try to achieve this and you are right that if there is some rotation the features might not match perfectly there might be some distance but you want them to be as close as possible all right and that's true for all the uh, all the characteristics whether it's a viewpoint invariant or like your rotation invariant elimination invariant of course there will be some differences a uh, question from russia when you say features are extracted are you extracting small segments of images yeah so this is like uh, generalized it could be like global features or it could be extracting like uh, features from your uh, small segments or it could just mean be like local features as well like extracting for each pixel okay so i hope that was your question are you extracting small segments of images okay i think i i got it so this is not extracting extraction of small segments of images the this is like trying to trying to capture some properties of your image and those properties could be like extracted from some segments or the entire image or, or even a pixel so this is like a feature vector you are learning for your image or you're extracting for your image is it clear Ruchia? professor um yes go ahead uh so we are not looking at the current image that is being provided we are basically uh like learning the features of the current image through the images which are stored in the database uh, that's a good point and that's exactly what this la last point is saying right it's saying that whatever features you're extracting it should be independent for each image so whatever feature you extract it should be independent of like images you have in your data set right okay it's sh it should not be dependent on that if it is then that's not a good feature because your data set might change at a later stage and if it's changed your features are changing so that's not good okay okay, okay. Right. so question from Zobin do the features have semantic knowledge that's a very good question for instance the feature is of a fountain so it it, it all depends like what kind of features you are extracting and ideally that's the end goal if you can do that if you can say that okay we have extracted this feature and this feature corresponds to as you're saying like of uh, uh, the fountain that will be i think a gold mine we are still trying to achieve that in in deep learning so that's called like explainable ai right explainable artificial intelligence where you can explain how you are actually performing the learning but that's that's very very difficult uh, i will say today okay so there is an entire like research area as i said like explainable ai so people are exploring different, different algorithms to do that. 
Okay, so regarding the compactness and efficiency, uh, as I said, like we want the representation to be as small as possible. Then what will happen is uh, then whatever problem we are trying to solve, we'll have to perform some kind of matching, right? And if the representation is small and compact, then the matching will be pretty fast. And ideally it should be much, much smaller than a whole image. So ideally we do extract features. Uh, let's say if you have an image of two to four by two to four and three channels. So your, the standard we use is maybe 128 dimensional feature vector, or it could be 256, or it could be 512. If it's a very complex data set or complex problem image, we can go maybe as high as 1024 or maybe 4096, but we try to avoid that. The lower numbers are uh, more preferable. Okay, so I think this point we already covered. We want like the extraction uh, independent per image. It should not rely on the other images in your data set. Right, so. Okay, so the first one uh, is key points. Uh, question from Fernando. So doing edge detection is a bad idea. No, that's not a bad idea. We will see how we can actually utilize edge detection to extract some meaningful features. Okay, so I think uh, that's good. A question from Zubin. Is there any benefit of doing global feature extraction over localized? Uh, I will not say benefit. It depends. Uh, it, it depends like what kind of problem you are solving, right? For example, if you are if you are doing image retrieval, which means that let's say you do image search in Google, right? So then you give a sample image and you say that okay, give me similar images. So then that's kind of a uh, image search. So in that particular case, your global features are, are are more beneficial because you want to match the exact image, right? So you want to extract features from the whole image. On the other case, uh, let's say if you are if you are doing um, maybe image stretching, where you have two images and you want to generate a panorama, like we discussed in the previous slide, right? So there you want to match like pixel to pixel correspondence. So that's called image registration. Then you want to extract local features because you want to find like matching of each pixel in one image to the other, right? So then local features are more, more useful. Okay, so all right. So first type of features we are going to talk about is uh, key points. And again, I will not say these are features, but this is kind of trying to extract meaningful information from your images. And it's based on like uh, the general concept of interest point. For example, when you when you go somewhere or you want to meet someone, you, you use some uh, landmarks, right? Uh, meet me near the shopping mall or the front gate. So you give those locations. So those are your landmarks in real world. Similar, you can have those landmarks or interesting points in the images as well. Okay, so that's the analogy. And let's try to uh, briefly explain what our uh, interest point is. And I think then uh, we will end it here and continue this uh, in the le next lecture. So the idea is your interest point uh, should be like uh, the point, which is kind of distinctive uh, distinctive in your, in, your, in your image, okay? And one in interesting property could be, it could be like boundary, uh, uh, some kind of boundary region, right? Where uh, there is sudden change in the intensity. For example, let's, uh, let's try to understand this uh, curve here, okay? So in this case, uh, this blue point is an interest point. And the reason is you can see that this is not an interest point, right? Because this is kind of flat. This is not giving you any interesting information for, for this curve. So whenever you have a flat curve, that's not an interesting point, but whenever there is some kind of pattern, you can see that edges are meeting. So in this case, this is an edge and this is an edge and these two edges are meeting. So then something interesting is happening. So this could be an interest point and that's how we describe them. And it doesn't have to be like just a meeting of two edges, even if multiple edges are meeting, for example, in this particular case, you have one edge coming from here, one edge coming from here, then the third edge coming from here. So again, this is an interesting point. Okay. So why this is interesting. So if you look at these two surfaces, so if you try to identify or discriminate between these two surfaces, then if you look at this region, it's not spatial, right? 
this image also had this region exactly same and even this surface here this image has has like surface has like similar region here the only distinctive point is this interest point right and that's why we call we call them interest points and that's why they're important because they can be used to discriminate between two different images or two different patterns okay so that's the concept whenever multiple edges two or more edges are meeting that will be uh, your interest point now let's try to uh, look at mo some more patterns so all the red dots in this uh, synthetic image here they all are interest points and you can see that over here all these are like corners three edges are meeting and again all these uh, red dots here they are corners of some kind of shape and if it's a corner then two edges should be meeting okay so then uh, you can also think about like why these uh, points are interesting because if i give you like these just these points and hide out like all the other stuff then this is kind of a sufficient information to try to estimate what kind of shape might be present in this region right because corners are something which are defining the shape and this is like a real world image again grayscale image and these all these red uh, red dots are like the key points and you can see that wherever uh, some edges are meeting so this is a car window and you can see like in the trees we have a lot of interest points because a lo lot of like irregular shape so, right? and on the sky or on the roof on the wall we don't have a lot because it's kind of a flat region okay so when we are extracting the interest points uh, there are some properties which we which we want to enforce so we want to detect all the true interest points we don't want to in, uh, detect any false interest point and if you will correlate this is like all the properties are similar to the properties which we want in our edges as well so they should be well localized and they should be robust with respect to noise and we should have an efficient way to actually detect those okay so one interesting uh, approach for uh, detecting these interest point is corner detection so that's the first algorithm we are going to talk about in this and that will be harris corner detector and this is uh, basically just based on the brightness of image and if it's the brightness then we will use image derivatives as well later we will see like uh, the exact details okay so we can just use the brightness uh, uh we are using making use of the boundary okay so boundary we can do like step edge detection or we can do some curvature analysis so that's fine we will cover those uh, later so now let me just show you uh, a quick uh, samples here which will define the goals and then we can end it here so this is a uh, image of this object all right and this is again you can see that it's the same object as a human we can say uh, it's very easy for us but if you think about this this is kind of rotated right and so there is a rotation and there is change in scale as well this is a smaller object and this is a much bigger object so if we are extracting features from these two images and they are consistent then those features will be rotation invariant as well as scale invariant okay so what we want from a good feature extractor is we 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 want uh, those uh, points to be repeatable and distinctive okay so let's uh, try to go through uh, this like when we do we, when we try to do this uh, uh, key point matching so these are the key points estimated in the first image okay all the uh, yellow crosses and again these yellow crosses are detected in the second image and you can see that they should be consistent the locations all right they're matching uh, there is one to one matching so we first find the distinctive key points the second part is like what we do is we draw a bounding box surrounding like each of these uh, detected key points okay and again the size can vary then if you just look at this particular patch and we resize it to like some kind of uh, resolution we can fix that and similarly we are looking at this key point here so you can see that it's corresponding to the same one and we extract the patch we try to normalize all right then after normalization you can see that they are perfectly matching and then we can easily extract some features from here extract some features from here and do the matching and if they match we can say that okay these two key points 
correspond to the same location in this object. And similarly, we'll do for all the other key points. And if most of the key points are matching, then we will say that, okay, these two images are of the same object. Okay, a uh, question from Sharon. Uh, second region is at an angle, and that's a very good point. So that's what we want. We want it to be rotation invariant, right? So the algorithm should be able to tell, okay, this is at an angle, and we can we should be able to use that angle to actually align it well. So it's not just angle, it's also the, uh, the size. And you can see here that uh, the size is also like, the scale is almost similar. But in this these two images, the scale is different. It's much bigger. So those are the two properties which you want in our algorithm. Okay. And yeah, we can extract the descriptors, do the matching. And if they match, they are the same point. Uh, so yeah, I think that's uh, just the intro. And next lecture, we are going to talk about Harris corner detector, how exactly we can detect these key points. So these will be like detecting corners uh, in your image. So we can end it here. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please let me know. Yeah, Shengen, that, that seems like a good topic, but uh, probably send me like a short description about this, what exactly you want to do and how it will be different from uh, the work these guys have done. Okay. Then we can like narrow down the scope like uh, for this project. And like, if you have any other group members, you can include their names, you can copy them in the email. Okay. So since there are no other questions, so let's let's end it here. Right. Thank you.